chapter eleven at once note the sublime precision that leads the earth over a circuit of five hundred million miles back to the solstice at the appointed moment without the loss of one second no not the millionth part of a second for ages and ages which had travelled that imperial road by edward everett dispatch is the soul of business by chesterfield unfaithfulness in the keeping of an appointment is an act of clear dishonesty you may as well borrow a person's money as his time by horace mann by the street of by and by one arrives at the house of never by servantes the greatest thief this world has ever produced is procrastination and he is still at large by h w shaw oh how i do appreciate a boy who is always on time says h c bobin how quickly you learn to depend on him and how soon you find yourself entrusting him with weightier matters the boy who has acquired a reputation for punctuality has made the first contribution to the capital that in after years makes his success a certainty nothing commends a young man so much to his employers says john stuart blackie as accuracy and punctuality in the conduct of his business and no wonder on each man's exactitude depends the comfortable and easy going of his machine if the clock goes fitfully nobody knows the time of day and if your task is a link in the chain of another man's work you are his clock and he ought to be able to rely on you the whole period of youth says ruskin is one essentially of formation edification instruction there is not an hour of it but is trembling with destinies not a moment of which once passed the appointed work can never be done again or the neglected blow struck on the cold iron to-morrow didst thou say asked cotton go to i will not hear of it to-morrow it is a sharper who stakes his penury against thy plenty who takes thy ready cash and pays thee not but wishes hopes and promises the currency of idiots to-morrow it is a period nowhere to be found in all the hoary registers of time unless perchance in the fool's calendar wisdom disclaims the word nor holds society with those that own it this fancies child and folly is its father wrought of such stuffs as dreams are and baseless as the fantastic visions of the evening oh how many a wreck on the road to success could say i have spent all my life in the pursuit of to-morrow being assured that to-morrow has some vast benefit or other in store for me i give it as my deliberate and solemn conviction said dr fitch that the individual who is tardy in meeting an appointment will never be respected or successful in life if a man has no regard for the time of other men said horace greeley why should he have for their money what is the difference between taking a man's hour and taking his five dollars there are many men to whom each hour of business day is worth more than five dollars a man who keeps his time will keep his word in truth he cannot keep his word unless he does keep his time when the duchess of sutherland came late keeping the court waiting the queen who was always vexed by tardiness presented her with her own watch saying i am afraid yours does not keep good time then you must get a new watch or i another secretary replied washington when his secretary excused the lateness of his attendance by saying that his watch was too slow i have generally found that a man who is good at an excuse is good for nothing else said franklin to a servant who was always late but always ready with an excuse one of the best things about school and college life is that the bell which strikes the hour for rising for recitations or for lectures teaches habits of promptness every young man should have a watch which is a good timekeeper 
one that is nearly right encourages bad habits and is an expensive investment at any price wear threadbare clothes if you must but never carry an inaccurate watch five minutes behind time has ruined many a man and many a firm he who rises late said fuller must trot all day and shall scarcely overtake his business at night some people are too late for everything but ruin when a nobleman apologized to george the third for being late and said better late than never the king replied no i say better never than late better late than never is not half so good a maxim as better never late if samuel budget was even a minute late at an appointment he would apologize he was as punctual as a chronometer punctuality is contagious napoleon infused promptness into his officers every minute what power there is in promptness to take the drudgery out of a disagreeable task a singular mischance has happened to some of our friends said hamilton at the instant when he ushered them into existence god gave them work to do and he also gave them a competency of time so much that if they began at the right moment and wrought with sufficient vigor their time and their work would end together but a good many years ago a strange misfortune befell them a fragment of their allotted time was lost they cannot tell what became of it but sure enough it has dropped out of existence for just like two measuring lines laid alongside the one and each shorter than the other their work and their time run parallel but the work is always ten minutes in advance of the time they are not irregular they are never too soon their letters are posted the very minute after the mall is closed they arrive at the wharf just in time to see the steamboat off they come in sight of the terminus precisely as the station gates are closing they do not break any engagement nor neglect any duty but they systematically go about it too late and usually too late by about the same fatal interval of tours the wealthy new orleans ship owner it is said that he was as methodical and regular as a clock and that his neighbors were in the habit of judging of the time of the day by his movements how asked the man of sir walter raleigh do you accomplish so much and in so short a time when i have anything to do i go and do it was the reply the man who always acts promptly even if he makes occasional mistakes will succeed when a procrastinator will fail even if he have a better judgment when asked how we got through so much work lord chesterfield replied because i never put off till tomorrow what i can do today dewitt pensionary of holland answered the same question nothing is more easy never do but one thing at a time and never put off until tomorrow what can be done today walter scott was a very punctual man this was the secret of his enormous achievements he made it a rule to answer all letters the day they were received he rose at five by breakfast time he had broken the neck of the day's work as he used to say writing to a youth who had obtained a situation and asked him for advice he gave this counsel beware of stumbling over a propensity which easily besets you from not having your time fully employed i mean what the women call dawdling do instantly whatever is to be done and take the hours of recreation after business never before it frederick the great had a maxim time is the only treasure of which is proper to be avaricious Lipnitz declared that the loss of an hour is a loss of a part of life napoleon who knew the value of time remarked that it was the quarter hours that won battles the value of minutes has been often recognized and any person watching a railway clerk handing out tickets and change during the last few minutes available must have been struck with how much he could be done in these short periods of time 
at the appointed hour the train starts and by and by is carrying passengers at the rate of sixty miles an hour in a second you are carried twenty-nine yards in one twenty-ninth of a second you pass over one yard now one yard is quite an appreciable distance but one twenty-ninth of a second is a period which cannot be appreciated the father of the webster brothers before going away to be gone for a week gave his boys a stint to cut a field of corn telling them that after it was done if they had any time left they might do what they pleased the boys looked the field over on monday morning and concluded they could do all the work in three days so they decided to play the first three days thursday morning they went to the field but it looked so much larger than it did on monday morning that they decided they could not possibly do it in three days and rather than not do it all they would not touch it when the angry father returned he called ezekiel to him and asked him why they had not harvested the corn what have you been doing asked his stern father nothing father and what have you been doing daniel helping zeki sir how many boys and men to waste hours and days helping zeki remember the world was created in six days said napoleon to one of his officers ask for whatever you please except time railroads and steamboats have been wonderful educators in promptness no matter who is late they live right on the minute it is interesting to watch people at a great railroad station running hurrying trying to make up time for they well know when the time arrives the train will leave factories shops stores banks everything opens and closes on the minute the higher the state of civilization the prompter is the everything done in countries without railroads as in eastern countries everything is behind time everybody is indolent and lazy the world knows that the prompt man's bills and notes will be paid on the day they were due and will trust him people will give him credit for they know they can depend upon him but lack of promptness will shake confidence almost as quickly as downright dishonesty the man who has a habit of dawdling or listlessness will show it in everything he does he is late at meals late at work dawdles on the street loses his train misses his appointments and dawdles at his store until the banks are closed everybody he meets suffers more or less from his malady for dawdling becomes practically a disease you will never find time for anything said charles buxton if you want time you must make it the best work we ever do is which we do now and can never repeat too late is the curse of the unsuccessful who forget that one today is worth two tomorrows time accepts no sacrifice it admits of neither redemption nor atonement it is the true avenger your enemy may become your friend your injurer may do you justice but time in is inexorable and has no mercy then stay the present instant dear horatio imprint the marks of wisdom on its wings this of more worth than kingdoms far more precious than all the crimson treasures of life's fountain oh let it not elude thy grasp but like the good old patriarch upon record hold the fleet angel fast until he bless thee by nathaniel cotton